Hello church, this is Pastor Lincoln and I want to welcome you to our special online Good Friday gathering. Our intent is to provide you wherever you are uh, today an opportunity to step away from your normal activities and spend some time reflecting on the cross of Jesus Christ. We refer to this Friday as Good Friday because it was a good day for us. On this day, the justice of God, his wrath for our sin, uh, intersected with his love for us, his love for sinners. We're going to take time uh, in these next few moments to consider uh, what Jesus did on this Friday in history. May it be a good day for each one of you. Cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that curse. body bound and drenched in tears he laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all Praise his name forevermore for endless days. We will sing your praise, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, our God. Oh, praise the name of the Lord, our God. Oh, praise his name. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope with no place to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began The ash was redeemed, only beauty remains. My orphan heart was given a name. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new now. Life begins with you. Our Savior displayed on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoiced as though Heaven had lost
Hi, I'm Gordy, one of the pastors here, and I have two questions for you as we begin uh, our teaching today. What's your earliest memory of the cross? And then, when did you really understand what the message of the cross was? My first memory was when I used to walk into our church, just like at Paulsville Community Church. The, the cross was lit up, you could see it. And my second memory was in fifth grade, my Sunday school teacher, Craig Harrison, gave me a glow-in-the-dark cross. And I put it in my bedroom on my bulletin board. And every night, I would look up and I'd see the cross glowing brightly. And uh, uh, Craig put this verse from Philippians 1.6 on there. It says, he who began a good work in you will bring it about to completion in the day of Christ. You know what, I'll have to admit to you, I didn't really understand what, what the cross was all about. I kept thinking, why did Jesus have to die on the cross for my sins? I didn't understand. And so I, I heard my Sunday school teacher say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I'm going like, what? I had no idea about the pain and suffering that Jesus went through to bear my sin and my shame. But I remember that Jesus had told the disciples three times that he was going to be betrayed and condemned to death and he was going to be turned over to the Gentiles to be mocked and to be flogged and crucified. And on the third day, he would rise again. But like the disciples, when they first heard that, they didn't understand at all. And they were confused. Matter of fact, they ignored it. And often Peter and John would say, we want to sit on your right and left. Will you do that for us, Jesus? And so like the disciples, I didn't understand. But if you want to turn your Bible to Matthew 26, you can see some of what I'm going to be saying. I'm just going to say a few highlights from uh, what happened to Jesus. Well, first of all, Judas was uh, wanting to betray him with 30 pieces of silver. And if you don't know anything about 30 pieces of silver, that was the common price paid for a slave. And the sad part about Jesus, when he went to betray him, he greets Jesus and he gives him a kiss to identify who they're supposed to arrest. And Jesus says to him, do what you came for. And then the men came forward and seized Jesus. And Peter used his sword, and he kind of takes this wild swipe at Jesus. And instead of missing, his, he misses his head and cuts off his ear. And Jesus lovingly uh, says to Peter, Wow, I, Peter, don't do this. I could have called 12 legions of angels. I didn't know what 12 legions of angels was, so it's, it's about five or 6,000 times 12. Do the math. It's 72,000 angels would have instantly come. But Jesus said, Peter, don't do that, because I want Scripture to be, be fulfilled. At that point, the disciples all deserted him, and they left him. And then Jesus was arrested. He was taken to Annas, a high priest, and where he was hit in the face several times. And Annas couldn't you know, do anything with Jesus, so he sent him over to the high priest Caiaphas. And he asks him, are you the Christ, the Son of God? And Jesus said, I am. In the future, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One God who's going to be coming through the clouds in heaven. The chief priest tore his clothes and he said, You've blasphemed and you cannot say that you're worthy of death. And, and they spit in his face and they struck him and they slapped him. And they knew that they couldn't kill Jesus. And so they turned him over to Pilate, who was the governor who did have authority. And Pilate asks him, are you really the king of the Jews? And Jesus says, yes. And Pilate tries to free him, knowing that Jesus, there's this custom that was coming up that they could release that prisoner. And Pilate asks the crowd, who should I release? Barabbas, the insurrectionist, the murderer, the thief, or Jesus, who proclaims himself the Christ, the king of the Jews? And in Matthew 27, 18, you can turn over there in your Bible if you'd like, Pilate knew it was out of envy and jealousy or greed that these chief priests and scribes and Sadducees turned Jesus over to them. 
Meanwhile, right in between, Pilate's wife, as he's making this decision, comes to him. He said, don't have anything to do with this innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. And in Matthew 27, 19, Pilate says, which one of you do you want me to release? And the chief priests and the elders begin to shout, crucify him, crucify him. They shouted louder and louder, and he washes his hands in front of them of his innocent blood. It's your responsibility to the crowd, he says. And at that point, they say back to him, let, it, let his blood be on us, our children. And they had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. You know, when he said he was flogged, I remember when I was 10th grade, my youth pastor started reading. When they had him flogged, this was the most gruesome, miserable, cruel punishment. And I remember when my, my youth pastor started reading a little bit about that. And I'm saying like, well, why would they do this to him? Pilate believed Jesus was innocent. And when he had him flogged, it was one of those political moves. It was torture for Jesus. Having your back beaten, chunks of skin ripped out each time. They, they whipped him with that horrific punishment and pain. And it would be several, several blows, even up to 39 or more. On the back, as he shreds those pieces, the lacerations would tear into the underlying skeletal muscles, producing quivering ribbons of bleeding flesh all over the place. It was hypophalemic shock, and it did four things to Jesus. It made his heart race, his heart race, it, his pressure would drop, the kidneys would stop working, and they'd begin thirsty. Jesus was already in critical condition after the beating he took. He probably didn't have much more skin on his back, and he was bleeding. And then we see in Mark 15, 16 through 20, the purple robe that they put on him would have been started to congeal then to his body because of the blood after the beating and with their fists. And then they would rip that purple robe off a few hours later, tearing all the, the oh my goodness, the pain, I can't even imagine. And then on top of that, they took this crown of thorn with these two to five inch crowns and didn't just put it on his head, they beat him with this on the top of his head so it would cut deep through his head. And that was a horrible, horrible thing. So Jesus then was sent on his way to go up to the hill to Golgotha, the place of the skull. He starts carrying the crossbar, which weighed between 50 and 90 uh, pounds, up the Via Della Rosa until he fell down. Then Simon of Cyrene was commissioned by the Roman, uh, Romans to carry that crossbar up there. When Jesus got to the top of Golgotha, they laid him on the wooden cross, and they put the rest of the cross together. And the Romans used five to seven inch long spikes uh, tapered to a, a point. And they were usually driven not through the wrist, not through the hand, but to the wrist. And, and the Romans called the wrist was part of the hand. And so when they drove these things right before, they would first do the left, drive the nail in, and they would pull him over. And so he would feel the excruciating pain of the nails ripping. And then he would put the other nail in the other side. And then they would push his body down and begin pounding right both feet together, the nail you know, just crueling, hurting him. And then in the midst of that, they would begin pushing the cross up. And you can just imagine those nails just being to sink down, uh, sink down because of his hurt and pain. You know what? We have to know that crucifixion is a death by asphyxiation. Because Jesus, when he's hanging down, he can't breathe. And so he has to push on the nails to get up to even take a breath. And then he would sink down again. The exhaustion, the scraping of the bloody back, the, the misery just to, to, to maintain. Jesus was in horrible pain. 
that anyone would go through something like this for us. What a savior. I have to admit at this point, I was weeping knowing that Jesus nailed on a cross between two robbers who, who were, and then on top of that, on Jesus thing, it says, your crime. And it said, Jesus, the king of the Jews. While the two robbers next to him, they were hanging there. One robber on the left was saying, are you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him and say, don't you fear God? Since you are under the same sentence of condemnation, you were under condemnation. We, we need, we indeed justly, we're receiving the due reward for our deeds. But Jesus has done nothing wrong. And Jesus said, he said to him, the, the robber, remember me in your kingdom. And he said to him, truly, I say to you, today, you will be with me in paradise. Well, people from the ground kept mocking Jesus. If you're the son of God, save yourself. You've saved others. Why can't you save yourself? If you're truly God, rescue him. Well, Jesus, even in his pain, wouldn't, wouldn't even acknowledge that. And eventually he says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And finally, between the sixth and the ninth hour, darkness came over as though God were abandoning him and leaving him in the dark, forsaken. And Jesus finally cries out, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus cried out in a loud voice, to tell us die. It is finished. And he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn from top to bottom. The earth began to shake. The rocks split. The tombs broke open. And the bodies of many holy men were died and brought to life. Matter of fact, the centurion even said to those around him, truly, he was the son of God. Well, what's the message of the cross today? Three short things. When Jesus said, it was finished, it is finished, what is the message of the cross? Well, number one, prophecies were fulfilled. All the prophecies, over 300 prophecies. Number two, the judgment of sin was complete. God placed on Jesus the sins of the world to cover our sins and remove them. He became sin for us who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds were healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us have turned to our own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Well, let's pray right now. Can you bow your head with me? Father, we are so thankful that you sent Jesus to take our sin and our pain and suffering so that we would never be separated from God because Jesus is always there. Lord, I admit, and maybe you do too, that I can be so selfish and so focused on my thoughts and my dreams Lord Jesus, we call out to you, save us. Save me from my selfish sin, my complaining attitudes, and even cursing people that, that disappoint me. God, I humbly come. Would you give us your forgiveness and that perfect love that casts out fear through all the problems and struggles we face? Give us endurance and resiliency. Give us the true message of the cross to willing, lo willingly lose our lives for your sake that others might find Christ. Father, forgive me for those that we kind of just write off. God, we need your gospel message every day. We're so thankful that God demonstrated his love for us while we were yet sinners, he died for us. 
Thank you for your death on the cross. Thank you for taking uh, the penalty of sin. Lord, we receive your forgiveness. Thank you for giving us sufficient grace for today. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. As we end this time of personal worship, I encourage you to take the next five minutes before you step away from your desk or your table, wherever you might be, take these next five minutes and uh, number one, uh, review. Why is this a good Friday? Why is it a good Friday for you? And then I want you to take some time and repent. Repent of your sins. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. What are your struggles? What are your challenges right now? Jesus died for those. And then I want to encourage you to consider reaching out. We still have a couple of days before our Easter services. Uh, who could you invite to our Easter service where they can hear the message of Jesus' resurrection and a clear presentation of the gospel? You know, wouldn't you love to see Jesus make a difference in the lives of your family and friends like he's made a difference in your life? Thank you so much for joining us today on this Good Friday. God bless you.